Today, we got a power steering pump to put in. Let's get to work. This is what we're working on today, a 2012 Honda Pilot. Honda updated the power steering pump to a new part due to some harmonic issues between it and the AC compressor. So I figured I'd bring you guys along, show you how to replace it. Looking under the hood, there's our power steering pump that we're going to be replacing. And here's our power steering reservoir. We'll go ahead and get this cover off. We just need a flathead screwdriver. We'll just go in here like this on each one of these. Come on. And now we should be able to just pop this off. It's over 100 degrees today, so I got to run the AC unit. So you may hear some background noise. I'm going to take a second to clean this area up. I'll just vacuum this stuff up and probably hit this area with some brake clean. Alright, I'm just going to use this setup here with a pump and a bottle of used power steering fluid. I'm just going to go right in there and I'm going to pump out as much of that power steering fluid in the reservoir as I can. You can see, pretty simple setup. That's all I'm going to do. Just pump it out really quick. Alright, that looks like about it. And while I'm thinking of it, we want to keep this power steering fluid off the belt and everything else as best we can. Before I replace the pump, I want to get the old power steering fluid out, or at least as much as I can within reason. So I'm going to pump it out using the pump itself, and to do that, I'm going to disconnect that line that's right there. That line, you can barely see it right there, that's coming into our reservoir. I'll disconnect it there, and we'll have to adapt to it so we can pump it out. So first, we've got to get this reservoir up out of its bracket so we can get to that little clamp right there. If you can see it, there's the clamp, yeah, right there. This reservoir is just held in place by this bracket, so we should be able to just pop it up and out. There we go. Now we have a little bit better access to this uh, hose right here and this clamp that's holding it on. To get that clamp, we'll just use some long needle nose pliers. We'll see if I can do it with you guys right in front of me. I'll just take this clamp. Come on. Not easy to hold the camera into it. We'll just move it back like that. Now we can get this off. Now I'm just going to take these long hose pliers. I'll reach down there, grab that hose, and pull it off. I'm going to need two hands because I'm going to have to hold the bottle. All right, let's see if we can get this with you guys right in my way. Bump the camera, but we got it. I have some old hose adapted to our power steering return line right there, and I put the clamp back. So now, when we turn on our vehicle, the power steering pump will pump any remaining fluid through the line, and it'll come out and go down into our bucket right there. Now this won't get every last drop, but we'll get the majority of it. So we'll go fire up the vehicle and pump that old fluid out. Once we start up the vehicle, it doesn't take long to get all that old power steering fluid out. Now that we got most of that old fluid out, I'm going to go ahead and pull my hose out of here. Now seeing as it's just one little clamp right here, we'll go ahead and get our reservoir out of our way. So we should be able to do that, and hopefully we can just twist it and yeah, get it up out of here. And we'll try not to make too much of a mess. I'm going to have to put the camera down so it doesn't drip everywhere. I didn't heed my own advice. I should have put the rags down before I disconnected that. But anyway, I got it cleaned up. That's it out of the vehicle. Still, I don't know if you can see it, there's still a little bit of fluid in there. So I'll go ahead and clean that out. Or I'll dump it out, I should say. And then I'll clean everything up. I'll just hit it with a bunch of brake clean and dry it out. And then it'll be good as new. Okay, reservoir is all cleaned up. Ready to go back in the car. Now, we got to get our belt off this power steering pulley right here. Now, to do that, we need to put a long wrench or serpentine belt tool on our tensioner right here. So that's a 14 millimeter nut. So we need a wrench long enough or a serpentine belt tool long enough that has a 14 millimeter end to put down there. And then we'll just push the wrench slowly this way and that'll put our loosen tension on our belt and we can take it off. Well, hopefully you can see my setup. I'm just using a long serpentine belt tool. This one is made 
uh, specifically to work on Hondas. I just have it down on the bolt down there and all we got to do is just gently push it forward. We don't want to go too fast and then hopefully you can see I'm just slipping the belt off the pulley like that and then we'll release the tension nice and slow and that's it. Now we can just kind of tuck our belt down out of the way. We're going to leave it in place though. I don't want to take it completely off. And this is the tool made by uh, Schley Products uh, 10950. That should be the part number. And I clipped the belt right there just to hopefully make it a little bit easier to put the serpentine belt back on so it doesn't fall off all the pulleys. All right, I put some rags down just in case we spill any more fluid. We shouldn't, but that's just in case. Um, now we'll go ahead and pull these two bolts off so we can get this high pressure hose off of our power steering pump. All right, I just have a 10 millimeter socket on the uh, electric ratchet. We'll just pop these free and spin them out. They're both the same length, so you can't mix them up. All right, now we'll just pop it up out of there. I'll use a sacrificial Harbor Freight glove so we don't make too big of a mess. Come on. There we go. Now we can just put that up out of our way. That'll be good right there. All right, I put a hood prop up. That way I could take the one that's attached to the vehicle and tuck it up out of the way so hopefully you guys have a better view now. Now to get this pump out we have to remove some stuff so we have a couple of choices. The easiest choice in my mind is just to take this intake manifold tuning actuator out of the vehicle. So there's just two hex bolts right there and we can pop it off and get it out of our way. We do have to unplug it first. If you don't know what this uh, IMT is basically there's a, a flap in there and all this thing does is turn that flap and it diverts the air and if I remember correctly if it's all the way closed you get more low-end torque and if it's all the way open you get more high-end torque but that's it in a nutshell so let's go ahead and unplug this and um, and pop these two bolts out all right to pop them out we're gonna need a hex I'm using a quarter inch so it'll fit in here otherwise we have to use a long one because the 3 ace won't and I'm using a little bit longer ratchet. Uh, this is a five millimeter and yeah they're not on there very tight so we can get that one and that one and now oh yeah I can just spin them off. These bolts are the same size and then we can just remove it just like that. So if you ever need to know how to take this off now you know. Now while I'm thinking of it, there is a gasket that seals this to the intake manifold. So you need to look and see where it went when you pull this off. Sometimes it could stick here, but I think in most cases it usually sticks onto the intake and that's where this one is right here. Honda recommends that you replace it, so we do have a new one for this job. All right, now these old original Honda power steering pumps, they have two bolts holding it in. One is right here and one is down at the bottom, so we're going to need like a 12 millimeter socket or something like that to get them off. Um, uh, just real quick I will mention and I'll go over it later in detail but these old ones do they have two bolts the new ones have three bolts so we're gonna have to account for a third bolt when we put this back in but I'll show you all that stuff when we get to it in the meantime we just got to get those two bolts out so we can get our old pump off all right three eighths inch ratchet this one's a little bit longer to give me better leverage and 12 millimeter socket we'll pop this one off first Just be careful, they might be on there tight, and then you don't want to smash your hands. Now, we've got to contend with that bottom one. I don't think, yeah, this one's not going to get it. I'm going to have to get a different setup. All right, this is the setup I'm using. The same long ratchet, but I have a deep 12 millimeter socket on the end. It reaches around there perfectly. And then I just moved this head um, or hood prop out of the way. Of course, you know, if you're working, it would be up like that. But I had it down out of the way for you guys. But hopefully we can just crack this loose. 
Come on. Yeah, okay, not too bad. All right, now let me just work it, getting that thing out. Once I crack that second one loose, you can see the pump, everything's loose, and I can get this one out on the bottom by hand now. And there it is right there. I believe all three of these are the same. We'll verify. Well, these two plus the third one that's going to be new, they should all be the same length. And there's our power steering pump. I took the power steering pump, dumped all the old fluid out, put it in the vise. Now we got to get this pulley off because we're going to have to use it on the new power steering pump. And uh, so we're going to have to get that 19 millimeter nut off. Now, in order to get that nut off, we can do it one of two ways. We can use a holder like this. This one is uh, made specifically for Hondas. And we could put it like that and use a ratchet to get that off. Or we can use an impact. We're just going to use an impact to zip this one off. Just like that. And we can go ahead and reuse this nut on our new pump. Now we should be able to just take this off. There, it'll come right off. So now this is ready to transfer over to our new one. And speaking of pump, here's our brand new pump we're gonna put in this vehicle. Of course, this one is from Honda. And this one is updated, I'll take it out in a second, I'll show you, this one is updated so that it has you know provisions to bolt it down with three bolts instead of two and in order to do that we have to put a new bracket in and let me see if I can get you the part number of this bracket that we're gonna have to use there it is right there hopefully you can read that and while I'm thinking of it in order to install this bracket and the pump to it we're gonna need a third bolt here's our part number for the bolt it's just like the other two we took out now we have a third one all right, if we look in here, there is our old bracket right there. So we're going to have to get that out. There it is right there. So you, as you can see, it's underneath this wiring harness. So we're going to have to move that out of the way. So we're probably going to have to loosen that up to get this out. And we might have to get this bracket out of our way so that we can move this wiring harness over a little bit because there's, there's two bolts that go down like that. We're going to have to get both of those bolts out to get the new one in. Man, that sucks. I just dropped a 10 millimeter socket all the way down there. It's gone. I ain't never getting it back. Son of a... All right, well, now that I can't find my 10 millimeter, uh, here's another 10 millimeter socket. We'll just go ahead and crack that loose and pop that out. And we'll try not to lose that. All right, with that bolt removed, you can see our harness is still kind of pinned in there because of this, at least I think so. So we're going to pull this bracket off, two 12 millimeter bolts right here, Let's see if we can get it with this. Come on. Oh, that one's a little tighter. All right. I'm going to put my hand down there so I don't drop those bolts, but we'll get that bracket out of the way. Alright, there's the top one. There's the bottom one. They're both the same. Now we should be able to just set this bracket out of the way. We don't even have to remove that ground wire. Now, can we move this harness enough? I think so. I think we can just sneak around there. Maybe we'll use some extensions or something and we'll get those two bolts out. All right, I got a 3 8 inch ratchet on there. This one's a little shorter. I do have a, I think that's a mid-length uh, socket on there, 12 millimeter. You can see it's just on the bolt right there. So we just have enough room to sneak in there and get it. Let's see if we can crack it loose. Oh, come on. Ah, that one's a little tight. All right, can I get the other one? I might have to put you down and see if I can get that other one now. Okay, I'm on there with the same ratchet set up. You can see we just got to get around the corner there. See if we can crack this one loose. Come on. we got to be careful not to hurt our hands. Yeah, that one was on there. Okay, now they're loose. I think I can spin them out by hand now.
Come on, you can do it. And there's another, oh, I forgot. We got this little bolt we gotta get off. I forgot about that. It's just a little bracket holding the a wiring harness on so we got to pop that tent off I did forget about this little bracket right here that holds this wiring harness on so I popped that loose we just got to get that off and try not to drop it like I did that socket and there we go and now we can get our bracket out all right I went ahead and grabbed our new bracket so you can see the difference right there so this is how the bracket sits in there, and there's that little bolt that I forgot. But that bolt and that bolt is what holds the bracket down. And then this thing right here, that's a provision for our third bolt on our uh, power steering pump. So we just got to set it down into place just like that. So there's our old one. And compare it to our new one. Make sure they look the same other than this, and we're good to go. All right now, we just gotta set this back into place. Come on. Little harness is definitely in the way. I think I'll, I'll go grab that bolt and I'll put that in right now so I won't forget it, and then we'll get it down into place. All right, I got the bracket for the wiring harness back on and buttoned up. Now, I just have to put the two bolts for our power steering bracket back in. Um, they're both the same, so let me go grab them and put them in. It's kind of tight, and I needed both hands to get that little bracket in there. It's just a, it's a pain, and it's tight, and I can't fit the camera in there. All right, both bolts are in there, started by hand. You can see that one, and hopefully you can see the other one back there. can't tell if you can see it or not, but it's right there. Now I just got to tighten them up. I'm going to have to tighten that one up by hand. Got a little bit too much of an angle on it. All right. Click. And click. Torque to spec. Now we'll just put this wiring harness back the way we found it. Just like that that bolt in there and then we can put our bracket back into place. And both of these bolts are the same also. I haven't come across any bolts that were different like in the same piece. These bolts and the ones in there are different, so don't mix them up. But as far as these two are the same, those two are the same. Now, if you're really concerned about torque specs, the two 10s that I took out, those are going to be 8.9 foot-pounds, and then the two 12s over here and the two 12s on this bracket, those are all going to be 16 foot-pounds, so they're not very much torque. So typically, you know, if you don't overdo it with a 3 8 inch ratchet, you're right on. All right, we just make sure our wiring harness is out of the way. So there is our extra um, area for another bolt. And then, of course, this one and this one are the ones we already took out. So now we got one, two, three when we put it back in. And, of course, we want to make sure we don't knock this around. I think that's where it was. Hopefully we don't set a trouble code if it's in the wrong position. But if it is, we'll take care of it. Um, and then we just got to not pin that in when we uh, put our power steering pump back in. All right. We'll take our pulley. Just set it out of the way. We'll go grab our new pump, we'll compare it to this old one, make sure everything looks good except for the extra bolt. 
or a area for a bolt I should say and then we'll take the new pump we'll install it in our vise with our soft jaws so we don't damage it and then we'll reinstall the old pulley onto the new pump and if we compare our new pump to the old one everything looks exact I think we're good to go except of course we have this provision right here for a third bolt so let's get that pulley transferred over now when we put this in here we don't need to go to town when we clamp it and we don't want to clamp it anywhere we're going to do some damage so all we got to do is get it snug just good enough to hold it in place so we can get our pulley back on and it's it's splined so make sure it should go all the way down like that up over the splines and now we got to tighten this up to 47 foot pounds I, I'll double check but it should be 47 foot pounds and I'll grab a 19 millimeter socket and it is 47 foot pounds so you just need some way to hold this there are plenty of pulley holders available that you can get I told you I have the one this is made just for Honda um, power steering pumps it's got a couple different variations so we can use it on different ones but we just need to hold it still so that we can torque it properly Eh, 47.3 and seeing as I'm right here I'm just gonna double check it and I think we're good and here's the contraption I'm using to get the shots hopefully it works I don't use this thing very often because it's kind of a pain but it's hard to film on a SUV type vehicle up and over down like that and still use both hands to do the job so hopefully this video comes out now we'll just go get the bolts and bolt it up and all three bolts are the same including our brand new one Try not to drop this third one. And definitely start them all by hand. Make sure they're going in. And we should be good to go. Now we just gotta tighten them up. Alright, I was able to tighten them all finger tight by hand. Now these are also 16 foot pounds, just like the other bolts, so we just need to get these snugged up. click see if I can sneak past the pulley with a, a deep socket here oh yeah I think there's just enough room click alright we can double check this one with a torque wrench I can't really get this torque wrench down there I don't think let me see no, I can't really get it into that one I might be able to get it on the bottom one with a deep we can verify this one right here. Now 16 foot-pounds isn't very much. Whoops, did I bump you guys? Yeah, it didn't even move it. 16.1. So just use your mind, not your muscle when you're doing these. Now I want to point out this is a 3 8 inch uh, torque wrench. And typically once you get below 20 foot-pounds on a 3 8 inch torque wrench they're not quite as accurate as they would be uh, in the upper ranges you know 20 to 80 foot-pounds they're much more accurate below 20 not quite as accurate now this snap-on I trust but other cheaper ones I, I definitely wouldn't trust under 20 foot-pounds and typically 15 is my cutoff if it's 15 or below I'll go to the quarter inch um, torque wrench and then I'll just adjust you know for inch pounds but 
just wanted to point that out. You need to be careful when you're using a torque wrench under 20 foot pounds because you could easily strip these out and over tighten them if you're using a, a cheapo uh, torque wrench because it can throw you for a loop. I've had that happen. Looks like I can get this front one also. Now it may look like it was moving based up here, but that's just the torque wrench head flexing a little bit. The actual bolt did not move. Uh, I cannot, yeah, I can't get a torque wrench with these lines in the way. I don't believe I can get it any way around here. Now I'm not even going to try. I'm confident that they're all 16 foot pounds. Okay, now we can reinstall our actuator back on the vehicle. Here is the gasket that Honda recommends should be replaced. Honestly, I don't think it's the end of the world if you reuse the old one. I'll just pull this one off. I mean, this looks in good shape. Honestly, if I didn't have a new one, I would probably have no problem reusing that. Um, we want to try to keep that in the same position. There are some teeth that mesh up. I think if it was off a little bit, the computer will recognize it and it will fix its problem, but just something to be aware of though in case you got issues. And of course, let's make sure there's no garbage on the mating surface here. Looks nice and clean. This side looks perfectly clean too. And so this will just set in place and then there's a little tab right there so it gets oriented correctly. We just set it down there. Now it's good to go. Just make sure it's not twisted. All right, we'll see if we can't slip this back into place. All right, it's all bolted up. The bolts are in place. Now we just gotta torque them down or tighten them up. They're, uh, what are they, 7.2 foot-pounds? So click. Click, that's 7.2. And before we forget, let's go ahead and plug this actuator back in. There's one O-ring connects right there so we have to replace that and that is going to be this outlet hose o-ring uh, there's your part number right there hopefully you can read it 14.4 times 1.9 millimeter hopefully that's correct hopefully I'm giving you the right information that should be that one and then this o-ring this 14.8 times 1.9 millimeter this should be the inlet or the suction side so that's going to go right down here on the pump but it already comes installed when you get the new pump from Honda. This little piece right here is already installed with the new O-ring. So we don't need this on this job, but just in case you're replacing O-rings or anything like that, or this one is bad and you need to do it, that should be your part number right there. Hopefully that's uh, legible. All right, we got to get the old O-ring off that hose. So I'm just going to use a nylon pick like this so we don't damage the surface. Take our Harbor Freight glove off. We'll just see if we can't pick this off. And you can see this one is black and the other one should be like a reddish maroon. The other one in there. And we'll just make sure our mating surface is nice and clean looks like it is and I'll take the new o-ring and I'm gonna coat it with brand new Honda power steering fluid I only put Honda power steering fluid in these systems that's all I recommend but you coat the new o-ring with Honda power steering fluid and then we'll get it on okay got the new one here coated with power steering fluid we'll just go ahead and pop it on if we can there we go Looks like it's good to go. And we'll take this little cap off. Make sure our mating surface is clean there. And just pop it into place. You should feel it kind of overcome that uh, O-ring and pop down into place. And put these bolts back. 
get them snugged up. These are only eight foot pounds, so we don't need to kill them. As part of my Accord project, I worked on the power steering system and serviced it and I talked about over torquing these and I showed some pictures of a friend of mine who over torqued these and as soon as they fired up the vehicle these heads just snapped right off so something to be aware of it's very easy to over torque these and he, he said he used a torque wrench I'm not positive if he did but he said he did so we'll take him at his word for it um, so just remember you low torque like these I trust feel more than I do a torque wrench like that um, so just be careful. He got lucky. It only cost him two new bolts. All right, I think we can put this back in. We'll just fish this under here. Try to get this hose back in place. And then this should go in here. And we should be able to pull this off. I think I will, I'll clean that up a little bit. All right, we'll just wipe off that a little bit. Get it cleaned up and then this should slide right over it now we just got to put our clamps in place and we try to get these clamps when when you're reusing hoses try to get the clamps right in the same exact position that helps you avoid leaks And we'll see if we can put this back in where it belongs. There we go. There's a little groove I'll try to show you right there. Make sure it goes into that groove. And you can see right there when you snap it into place, it should go into those grooves on each side. And then this piece, this piece right here should snap in. Alright, now I'm just going to take the serpentine belt and fight with it for a while and try to get it back on. Whenever you're putting the belt back on, the angles can change because the belt's not on, you know, the pulleys, and so our tensioner is in a different position. So you kind of have to play around. In this case, I loosened that up and had to go on this side of it to get the belt back on because I tried to go the other way and it wouldn't. But in any event, sometimes you got to improvise like that, you know, when, when you're working on cars, not only putting belts on, but just working on cars in general. Improvise, adapt, overcome. And of course, you want to make sure it is on all the pulleys correctly. Otherwise, you'll know right away when you're buying a new belt. All right, now I'm going to top off the system with genuine Honda power steering fluid. And like I said before, this is all I recommend. Now I'm going to fill it all the way up. I'm going to top the reservoir off. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit above the max line for this first time because it's going to get immediately sucked into the system. And typically what I do, I'll turn the vehicle on I'll just let the pump run just for a few seconds and it'll suck this in and then I shut it off because we don't want to run the pump dry. It's going to start sucking air as soon as it pulls all this fluid in. So we don't want to do that. So that's what I do. I'll shut it off. I'll come out and I'll top it up again and then I'll do it a second time. And I'll keep doing that until when, um, when I fire it up, it's not dropping anymore. And then after that, I'll turn it lock to lock, let it run for a while, make sure all the air is out of it, and then I'll fill it up to the very... Uh, max line and then we'll be good to go. I won't show that whole procedure here. I've shown it in other videos I'll link some videos showing exactly how I do it. This angle is not very good for seeing it um, But in any event, that's what I'm gonna do and um, and then once I'm satisfied this is all good I'll put the cover back on If we watch the power steering reservoir we can see the fluid getting sucked into the system I'm just going to do this procedure a couple more times till I'm satisfied there's no air in our system and the power steering fluid is all topped off. All right, now that it's all topped off, we'll go ahead and see if we can get this thing reinstalled.
All right, it's all put back together and topped off. And while I'm thinking of it, you're probably going to need at least three bottles of Honda Power steering fluid if you're going to do this job. Well, that's it for this one. And as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.